The Florida Gators are in a very interesting spot. Back in the day, Will Muschamp took over, but was mediocre and was fired. Then, Jim McElwain took over, won two SEC East titles, but couldn't get over the hump and had some off-the-field controversy, so he was fired. After that, they brought in the savior of Dan Mullen from Mississippi State, but after he started to lose and had some questionable off-the-field issues, he was fired too. Now, it seems Florida has their fourth head coach in the last 10 years, and that guy is Billy Napier. I've been talking about him for a long, long time on this channel, and I think he is the real deal. When it was announced that he was going to be the head man at Florida, I was very happy, as he's going to do a great job there, and he's going to turn this program back around. But, are expectations too high in year one? What should we expect from the Gators this year? And honestly, what is the truth going on here? In today's video, we're going to preview the 2022 Gators, talk about their roster, their schedule, expectations, and more. So, without further ado, let's just get started and talk about Florida football. Like always, we first need to go back in time and see how they did in 2021. The Gators had a lot of hype last year, despite some holes on the team. They started out ranked number 13 in the country and beat Florida Atlantic pretty easily in week one. In week two, they traveled to Tampa, Florida to take on South Florida, and they won that game pretty easily as well. Week 3 was one of the most highly anticipated SEC games of the season as the number 1 Alabama Crimson Tide came to town. In this game, the Gators put up a fight and they even scored a late touchdown, but they could not get the 2 point conversion and they lost 31-29. After that, they would bounce back with a double digit home win against Tennessee before the season would start to fall apart. On the road against Kentucky, Emory Jones threw a late interception and they lost 20-13 to to the Wildcats and this now put them at 3-2 and two, and it would cause a spiral. Yes, they would beat Vanderbilt, but then they lost to LSU, got humiliated by number one Georgia, and then got killed by South Carolina. That 40-17 loss to the Gamecocks was sort of the nail in the coffin for Dan Mullen, but they would give him two more games. It didn't help his case as the team was losing to Samford at halftime and they were celebrating as if they won the Super Bowl when they came back and won, and that was embarrassing because Samford is not good at football. But don't worry, Dan Mullen was humiliated the following week as on the road against Missouri in a battle for bowl eligibility in a very good game between the two teams, Missouri went for two and won 24-23 in overtime and the next morning, Mullen was fired. From there, they would beat their arch rival Florida State in the final game, and this would get them to a bowl matchup where they would lose to UCF. The funny part about that game is that Emory Jones already entered the portal, but he decided to play that game. The defense wasn't great, they played down the competition, and the quarterback room was not spectacular, and combining that with Mullen's off-the-field antics, he was gone, and they now have to find a new head coach. That is where Billy Napier comes in. He has been dominant at Louisiana the last few years and is going to bring a tough-nosed, systematic approach to Florida, and I think they're going to do really well. But what does the roster look like for this year? The Florida Gators had three players selected in the 2022 NFL Draft, the first of which was a first-round pick in corner Kyir Elam, then they had their best defensive tackle in Zachary Carter get drafted in the third round, and then their star running back Damian Pierce would go in the fourth round. They definitely have a good amount of talent returning for next year, so let's take a look at that. In terms of recruiting, the Gators signed the 20th best class in the country, which was headlined by safety Kamari Wilson, defensive lineman Chris McClellan, and Travis Etienne's little brother, Trevor Etienne. There's definitely some good talent there, and they also made a splash in the transfer portal. They brought in a great lineman from Louisiana by the name of Osiris Torrance, a former blue chipper from Georgia in corner Jalen Kimber, a star freshman running back from Louisiana by the name of Montrell Johnson, another offensive tackle from Louisiana by the name of Cameron Waits, and then former Ohio State quarterback Jack Miller. I'm excited about those five transfers, but now let's talk about the roster itself. In my opinion, there's not a quarterback battle going on in Gainesville, but there are two guys who are fighting for the job. The first one is obviously Anthony Richardson, commonly known as AR-15. Coming out of high school, he was a four-star recruit, and he showed flash of brilliance last year despite Florida's struggles. Everyone begged for him to get more time, but Dan Mullen reluctantly always chose Emory Jones, and now that AR-15 is going to be released this year, many think he's a dark horse Heisman candidate and that he's going to solve all of Florida's quarterback problems. I think he's going to be good, but let's pump the brakes a little bit and I think he'll just be an average starter and we could really see him take off in 2023. I think he will be the starter, but he will have to fend off Jack Miller, who was another four-star recruit coming out of high school who lost the job to CJ Stroud and moved down to Gainesville. Miller will be a good backup, and then after that, you will have Jalen Kitna, the son of John Kitna, and then Napier had a late underrated signee in Max Brown. No, not the former five-star from USC, but Max Brown was a late rising quarterback from Lincoln Christian High School in Oklahoma and could be an impact player down the road, but for now, he's going to redshirt. In my opinion, there are four running backs who are going to see the field as they try to replace Damian Pierce. 
The guy who would be first string is Montrell Johnson. As a freshman with Louisiana, he had 838 yards and 12 touchdowns last year, and according to what I'm seeing, he's likely to be the number one guy. Behind him, you're going to have Naquan Wright, who I think will be a good backup, and then you have the two guys everyone's most excited to watch in Demarcus Bowman and Lorenzo Lingard. Bowman was a five-star recruit coming out of high school, but after getting buried on the depth chart at Clemson, he decided to go back to Florida, where he'll now fight for playing time. And then there's Lorenzo Lingard, who was also a five-star recruit coming out of high school, but he instead went to Miami, got buried on the depth chart, and decided to go back to Florida, where he hasn't played, and there has been concerns about him. I think Lingard's fourth on the depth chart, and I think Bowman will inevitably rise to second, but I'm not worried about Florida's running back room at all, and I'm very excited to see what they are going to do. The wide receiver room has some question marks. There are many guys who are going to play, and honestly, I'm going to need help from Florida fans to figure out who's going to be wide receiver one. Right now, Xavier Henderson and Justin Shorter are my two picks, but there are plenty of other guys on the roster. Guys such as Marcus Burke, Daniel Cross, Justin Curtis, Jaquavion Frazier, Khalil Jackson, Jordan Pouncey, Dejon Reynolds, William Sawyer, Jamarcus Weston, and Trent Whittemore. That's a lot of names to sort through, and there's going to be a lot of guys fighting for playing time and fighting for reps. If I had to choose, I think Justin Shorter and Henderson will be the top two guys, but the best weapon on the team will not be a wide receiver, as they have had a tight end blow up over the spring. His name is Dante Zanders. Not only was this guy not a blue chip recruit, but he was actually a defensive lineman. Over the spring, he has been asked to move to the offense, and he shined in the spring game as he led the team in catches, and some are saying he could be the answer at tight end in one of the top weapons on the team. When we move on from him though, the offensive line I think is going to be fine, as there is talent there and they brought in some good transfers, and the defense will be a question mark, but I really do trust Napier, but honestly I am a little bit worried as Anthony Richardson has never started a season and they don't have a wide receiver or a running back one just yet, which is why they could have a slow start to the 2022 season. But let's first take a look at the schedule. They get a very difficult game as a likely top 10 Utah team will come to town. And while the Swamp will be rocking, I think the Utes are the better team here. And they're going to outplay Florida in week one and get that win, dropping Florida to 0-1. I do think Florida will bounce back immediately in week two. And while Kentucky has beat them a couple of times in the last few years, Florida has owned the Wildcats. And I think they're going to be looking for revenge. And in week two, they're going to knock off Kentucky to get that revenge. After that, they're going to beat USF at home before they have to travel to Neyland Stadium at Tennessee. This is also a rivalry game, and while I think Florida will be very competitive in this game, I'm really high on Tennessee this year, and that is going to be a tough environment, and I think Tennessee is going to get that win, giving Florida a 2-2 two and two start. But from there, things get a lot easier, as they'll beat Eastern Washington at home, then they get Missouri at home, and as you know, I'm a Mizzou fan. I'm not very high on this Mizzou team this year, so Florida's going to win that game. And then I think they're going to beat LSU. I really don't know what to expect from the Tigers as they have not figured out their quarterback spot yet and they have a lot of holes to fill. And while the Tigers will be talented, this game is at home for the Gators. And after what happened last year, I think Florida gets revenge and wins that game, bringing them to 5-2. and two. After that, they have a very difficult stretch as they will play against Georgia, which I think they'll lose. And then they go on the road to Texas A&M, which I think is overrated, but I think they will take care of the Gators in that game. And that now gives Florida four losses. Their final three games, in my opinion, aren't that difficult, as they'll get South Carolina at home, who I think is very overrated, and they'll win that game, and then they'll go on the road and beat Vanderbilt. That will get them to their seventh win, and then they go on the road to Florida State for the final game of the regular season. I actually am decently high on the Seminoles this year, but I'm also extremely high on Billy Napier and this Florida team, so I think this game will be an instant classic, and Florida's going to pull off the upset on the road and get themselves to eight wins. From there, they'll get to a pretty decent bowl game, and it'll be a great first year for Billy Napier. But honestly, what the heck do I know? For all I know, they could upset Utah and beat Tennessee or Georgia, or they could also lose to Vanderbilt and Missouri. I really don't know, and we're just going to have to wait and see, as expectations are going to be really high for Napier, they're always high for Florida, and you really don't know what's going to happen in year one under a coach. I'm extremely high on Napier, as he has been waiting years for a job like this, and I think he's going to do a great job there. But as for right now, I think we should pump the brakes on Florida being an SEC East contender. And for now, I think they're just going to have a pretty good season in which they will build off of for 2023. What do you guys think though? If you're a Florida fan, please tell me what I got wrong down in the comment section. Give me your thoughts on the roster, your projected record, and your expectations for Napier. If you're a fan of another school, give me your thoughts on Florida and let me know what team I should cover next. And before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including all my other 2022 previews. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.